we're going to determine the displacement of a plane that experiences uniform acceleration from 66 meters per second to 88 meters per second in 12 seconds. Now, the first thing that I want to do is identify my variables by their units. So if we look here, we've got 66 meters per second. Anything with meters per second is going to be a velocity. I've also got 88 meters per second. This will be a velocity also. Question is, which one is initial and which one is final? Since it goes from 66 to 88, we know that the initial is 66 meters per second. My final is 88 meters per second. And then my change in velocity is a positive 22 meters per second. I also want to point out something important and that is this phrase uniform acceleration. This is a phrase that we like to see because when we talk about acceleration uniform acceleration means that it doesn't change. It's a constant increase. Now if we did not have uniform acceleration we'd have to worry about you know what the acceleration is at one time versus what it is at another time, and that would turn out pretty messy. We've got one more unit here, and that's seconds. So anytime you see seconds, that's going to represent time. So our time equals 12 seconds. All right. The second thing that we've got to do here, after we've identified the variables by their units, is we have to look at what equation we're going to use. So let me go ahead and write down my different equations here. Your very simplest one is that velocity is your change in distance over a certain period of time. You've got acceleration, your change in velocity divided by the change in time. Then there is Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. We've got df equals di plus b i t plus one half a t squared. We also have final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two a d. So we have to be able to identify which one of these equations we need. The way we're going to do that is to find what we have and what we need and match it up to an equation. So if you'll see here, I have initial and final velocity and I have time. And I'm solving for displacement. When I get finished solving for displacement, my units are going to be in meters. So when I look over here, I can see that either this one or this one will have initial velocity, displacement, time, I could use either one of these, but notice I have to figure out something no matter which one of these I use. I've got to figure out acceleration. So acceleration is a change in velocity over time. Putting that into factor label method, the change in velocity over 1 times 1 over time. 
and that equals positive 22 meters per second divided by the time 12 seconds. 22 divided by 12 gives me 1.83 meters per second squared. Now I have a choice. I can use this one or I can use this one. And I do want to make life easy on myself. This one I would have to deal with fewer numbers but I have to deal with bigger numbers. So if you're using a calculator, this one would probably be the easiest one for you. We will have to solve for D. So, starting out with DF equals DI. Let me just undo that. I said we were gonna use the other equation. So we're going to start out with VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now I'm going to solve for D, our displacement. So I'm going to subtract VI squared from both sides. So I get VF squared minus VI squared. Divide that through by 2A, and that equals D. Now I'm going to just plug in my numbers or substitute my numbers in for my variables. I'm going to put this in factor label method. So remember that it's going to look like this. VF squared minus VI squared times 1 over 2 times the acceleration. Now I'm going to need to just make myself some room here. Okay, so I'm just going to substitute in my numbers now. My final velocity was, I believe, 88 meters per second. Let me go back to my first page so I can make sure of that. Yeah, my final velocity was 88 meters per second. Now remember, this is going to have to be squared, minus my initial velocity, which was 66 meters per second. Then, whatever I get here, I'm going to multiply by the inverse. In other words, I'm going to divide by two times my acceleration, which was 1.83 meters per second squared. Okay, looks kind of ugly, but it's not going to be. It'll work out pretty easy for us. Remember, if I square the 88 meters per second, 
I have to also square my unit. All right, so 88 squared is 7744 meters squared over seconds squared. 66 squared is 4356 meters squared per second squared. I'm going to go ahead and pull this term down. Since we have meters squared over seconds squared, I can subtract these because these are going to be like terms. So 77, 44, minus 43, 56 is going to give me 3388 meters squared over second squared. Now I'm going to bring down this one. So this is second squared over 2 times 1.83. I get 3.66 meters. Now before I go any farther, I need to look at um, what my units are going to be to make sure that I set up my problem correctly. Because if my units don't work out, my problem's not going to work out. So second squared is going to cancel second squared. This meter is going to cancel out the squared. So I'm going to end up with meters. Is that what I want? Yes, it is, because displacement is going to be measured in meters. So now we're just simply taking 33.88 divided by 3.66, and I get 925.7 meters. All right, let's take a look at our significant figures. We started out with two significant figures with the 88, the 66, and the 12. So if we keep two significant figures, my answer is going to be 930 meters.